so there it is, the Huawei Android M835 smartphone. Welcome to this unbiased review. I do not work for Metro PCS. I do not work for Huawei. I do not own stock in either of those organizations. And so I'm going to tell you why it rocks, and I'm going to tell you why it sucks. First of all, if I had to put this review in a fortune cookie, it would say... By the way, you push any button at all to turn the display on. If I had to put this review in a fortune cookie, it would say Huawei M835 smartphone good, Metro PCS sales software and service bad. So uh, from the, the screen that you see when you first turn the display on, you can do two things. You can change it from noisy mode to silent mode, back to noisy mode. You can have it vibrate only in silent mode or only in noisy mode or vibrate all the time or you can have it never vibrate. And then you can also unlock it, which you do by swiping your thumb that way. What? Come on. Bad timing. There we go. So this is the screen that you see when you first log in. And I know this is not the, the clearest thing in the world, but you can see a microphone right there next to the Google search bar. What happens when you touch that microphone is it brings up a speech-to-text interface. Check this out. Metro PCS sucks. And here we go. It, it heard correctly. Metro PCS. Can you read that, people? Metro PCS sucks. And now, uh, top result, we have a video by an angry, uh, disgruntled Metro PCS customer, uh, which ironically we can view using Metro Web, which is Metro's PCS, Metro PCS's web browser. Now, I should point out that we are connected to a Wi-Fi network, which makes it possible for us to view this uh, video at a much faster and smoother speed than we could if we were walking down the street. Here we go. Title of video is Metro PCS Sucks So Bad. Here it comes. Brace yourselves. Yo, what's up? This is the Hawk one more time, man. I'm still on the 91 freeway, but I just got something else to tell you guys. Does anybody know how bad Metro PCS sucks? <laughs> oh, Metro PCS sucks so bad! Oh! Dude, I just bought a Metro PCS phone, right? Samsung. Sweet phone. How come the service of Metro PCS sucks so bad? It sucks so bad! I even... Okay. I bought a Bluetooth, right? The Bluetooth was absolutely amazing. I think it's like, not Plantronics, but it's like from Sharper Image and everything. Off the chain. Why when I put it on Metro PCS? There's no signals! Has anybody noticed? There's great signals one spot and then there's no signals anywhere else? Who makes a phone? That sucks butt! Oh! Man, I'm sweating. Okay, so um, we had to, to terminate that prematurely in order to get back to business here. Uh, his sentiments are identical to mine, that the phone is good and the service is bad. I have not had a problem with dropped calls. The problem that I've had actually has been a problem with the voicemail. What happened when I tried to set up my voicemail was they told me to enter a password, but before I could enter a password, the screen locked up and it said tap twice to unlock, and I tapped twice and then the keypad had disappeared, so I had to hit menu and then keypad, and then I started entering the password, but the keyboard the keypad locked up while I was entering it, and it somehow managed to register a different password from the one I entered, and it cut me off before I could change it, and I now cannot access my own voicemail, and apparently the only way to rectify this is to go to Metro PCS's shop, because you cannot get a live human being on the phone. Anyway, let's explore this a little bit. Uh, this is the frame three on the desktop, if you scroll to the right, you get frame two. There's a little robot who teaches you how to move the icons around in Android. If you scroll again, you get frame one. That's frame two. That's frame three. There's a four and a five, which I won't get into. There's this little button here, which allows you to dial calls on a traditional style telephone keypad. Uh, um, there's this one that looks like a globe, is your World Wide Web browser. And this one in the middle brings up the list of all your uh, applications in alphabetical order. 
I could go on and on and on, but uh, I'm going to demonstrate just one more thing here, which is the GPS. Click that badge that looks like a, a old Star Trek badge and say Speak Destination. Navigate to Gary, Indiana. We're in California, by the way. And it got that right. Navigate to Gary, Indiana. You don't even have to press OK because even if it's incorrect, it presses OK for you. And getting driving directions. I hope you people out there in radio and TV land brought snacks in a magazine because I'm going to use my thumb to drag us along this route. Interesting how it shows us that it's nighttime. 2,136 miles to Gary, Indiana. And, uh... I'm confused already. How are we supposed to do this? There really does seem to be a problem with the north, south, east, and west. Because, basically, um, it's, it's showing us the wrong way if you presume that the machine is capable of orienting itself. I have no experience with GPS, so I can't compare this to other systems. I have no experience with Android or smartphones. But I'll tell you this. I've had the unit for 10 days. And I have not read the instructions, and I've found that it is extremely intuitive when it comes to, uh... Oh, I'll show you one more thing. How about the old camera? So here's the camera. And, uh... When the camera is on, um... It has two positions here. See, this switch under my thumb goes from the still picture to the motion picture setting and back to still picture. When it's set to still picture, you can either press this virtual button on the touch screen to take a photograph, or you can press this physical hard button on the camera body. Same function. So if you want to make a motion picture, you just move it up to motion picture, and then those buttons become the start button and the stop button, respectively. You see there's a little counter down there in the lower left corner, and we uh, are making a film of my beautiful lightning in the Joshua Tree desert at night. Stop and stop. There you go. So I could go on and on and on, but uh, hopefully those of you who are considering <laughs> buying this will have a little bit better idea. It rocks, and it sucks. And it only really sucks because Metro PCS includes adware, which you cannot remove without rooting the phone, which is sort of the Android equivalent of a, a jailbreak on an iPhone. But what I'm considering doing, actually, is keeping the phone and not paying for Metro service because I can still connect to the Wi-Fi network at my house or sit on the front lawn of the library and open Skype and talk to people in Paris and London and New Delhi for free and download all kinds of amazing applications and use this thing for Android development and I don't have to pay Metro PCS until they figure out how to suck less. Thank you so much for your time and feel free to comment down there and uh, any questions that you have I'll be happy to try and answer. Anything you want a tutorial or a demo of I'll be happy to try and put it together.